It's been more than 70 years since Jackie Robinson broke barriers as the first African-American to play in Major League Baseball. He would go on to become a civil rights activist, a friend of Martin Luther King Jr. And today, his daughter is writing about that fight, about what became her fight, a new novel called A Child of the Dream. Sharon Robinson recalls growing up during the civil rights movements, working with her father for equality, and she writes, quote, during our dinner table conversation, we always had some time to talk about what was happening with us kids. But it always moved into what was happening outside of our home. So we were very focused on what kind of social changes were happening. It wasn't just about the civil rights movement. I watched political news. I was very involved with politics with my dad. So that was part of my relationship with him. This connection with the civil rights movement was a big piece of it. Sharon Robinson joins us now. Sharon, great to have you with us. What moved you Thank to write you, this Anna. book? Why now? Um, the 1963 um, Children's March in Birmingham, Alabama was an inspiration for me, and I wanted to find a way to help it be an inspiration for children today. I feel like they're struggling with so many issues. Um, they need to look back at history and see how activism pl played a part in changing laws, but also changing cultures. You say you don't really remember your dad as a baseball player like the rest of the world, but you really remember him as a civil rights activist. Explain that. Well, I was seven when he retired from Major League Baseball, so I certainly knew he was a baseball player, but I did not go to attend many of his games. So I, I grew up with him as an activist and a businessman, um, and, and he brought it home to our d dining room table every evening. So. Uh, he traveled south, raising money for the civil rights movement, and then he found a way to bring the family into the movement as a family. So as a child, you know, as a parent myself, I always think about how do I make sure my children learn the right lessons about, you know, how to be good people and how to, you know, interact with others. What did you take away from him as a father in terms of those types of lessons? That struggle is ongoing and that we talked about them as family, as a family, and we found a way to, to have an active role. So we started having the jazz concerts um, at our home to raise money for, for NAACP and SCLC, Dr. King's work, and, and we also mar went to the March on Washington as a family. So we as a family became activists, and, and Dad said, you know, you have to find work you love, you know, keep God and family as a priority, but we also are going to have a family mission. And we've continued that since my uh, dad's passing so many years ago um, through the Jackie Robinson Foundation mm -hmm. and our work, our, our careers. In his autobiography, your father writes the following. There I was, the black grandson of a slave, the son of a black sharecropper, part of a historic occasion, a symbolic hero to my people. The air was sparkling, the sunlight was warm, the band struck up the national anthem, the flag billowed in the wind. It should have been a glorious moment for me as the stirring words of the national anthem poured from the stands. As I write this 20 years later, I cannot stand and sing the anthem. I cannot salute the flag. I know that I am a black man in a white world. Your father was speaking about his first World Series game there. That was 70 yes. years ago. And now, you know, here we are today. Players are kneeling. They still don't feel like this country represents or necessarily respects them or treats them equally. How do you think your father would feel about where race relations are today compared to 70 years ago? Well, he prepared us that it was going to be an ongoing struggle. It's become more complex. It's no longer just a black and white world. Uh, we're no longer just changing changing laws, you know. And he, and he also told me that it's harder to you can't legislate against hate. So we do have mm. to teach kindness, as you're talking about, um, with our children, and help them understand a world be beyond our, our immediate families. Um, and we do that by talking with them and being open about our feelings and allowing them to express their feelings about race. What do you think your father's message would be to these players who are, you know, taking their activism onto the field? Well, that protest is important and it's part of the phase and we have to move beyond protest and have a, have a plan for um, change and for activism. So you know what you're protesting for and have a plan. Part of what we learned in the civil rights movement is to keep it tight and, and focused on um, something specific. And so I think that the players, many of them have set up foundations and are really doing some positive things as a result of their activism. We're seeing Democratic candidates now talk more about 
resegregation of schools, about criminal injustice and environmental injustice when it comes to minorities. How do you think the candidates are handling these issues? And is anyone's <laughs> message in particular resonating with you? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm a Democrat, so I'm, I'm, I'm still watching the field. Um, but we certainly have, have to uh, deal with all of the issues that they're talking about. Um, and it is, and people have to get out and vote. So our voting is going to be so important. So my dad would have been out there um, with voter registration drives, and that's what we all must do. We must encourage uh, our young people and our, as well as our, our adults to get out and vote, because that's, that's the only way you really have a voice. Sharon Robinson, a good way to end that segment with that message. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Again, the book is Child of the Dream.